Hey everybody, it's Chief Meteorologist Brad Benamich. Hope you're having a great Wednesday. A better day today weather-wise. If you can get outside today, do it. It is a little bit chilly. Gotta get the sweatshirt on today because it feels kind of like a fall day. Temperature right now is in the mid-50s in Charlotte. We will be warming up, hopefully, closer to 60, which will be below average. And that leads to today's topic. Um, meteorologist Aisha Scott is going to talk about weather maps. And the map you see off to my which is my left here, but on camera, it's off to the right, <clears throat> is actually today's weather map. And you can see we had a little bit of snow in the mountains this morning. Actually, about five inches of snow fell at Mount Lacan Beach Mountain. I've got about two to three inches of snow. But when you see those L's and H's and those fronts, those blue lines and uh, you know blue lines and red lines, what do those mean? So meteorologist Aisha Scott is going to show you a little bit about how the maps work, how these produce clouds uh, and severe weather. We'll do a little bit of tornado talk today. Um, we probably will cover tornadoes again at some point, um, I think coming up in the next uh, week or so. Um, I want to definitely hit it again because we are in the middle of severe weather season. and It's always a good time to talk about severe weather preparedness and safety. So today's weather school, maps and fronts from meteorologist Aisha Scott. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to WCNC's Weather School. I am meteorologist Aisha Scott, and I want to talk to you today about some things that you would typically find on your everyday weather map. All right, so are you ready? If so, let's get started. All right, we're going to start with this circled blue H. All right, now this blue H is high pressure. Okay, so high pressure is sinking air, right? So usually when we have sinking air, we have blue skies, a lot of sunshine. The weather is very, very quiet. So I know we talked about high pressure a little bit when we talked about the weather instruments. So if you like to go outside, maybe ride your bike, if you like to go hiking, high pressure is your friend. The weather is very quiet. But on the opposite end, we have low pressure. Low pressure is literally, literally <laughs> the complete opposite. So we have rising air. Rising air creates clouds. It creates rain. Believe it or not, yesterday, the reason it was so cloudy and rainy is because we actually had an area of low pressure that tracked just south of our area and brought us the rain, the clouds, the winds picked up a little bit. So low pressure usually isn't the best weather setup if you like to be outdoors. But with all of us being inside today, yeah, yesterday was a little bit gloomy, but we do actually today have high pressure building back in. All right, so let's talk about some fronts here. We've got this red front, and that's typically a warm front, this particular front that you're seeing. Uh, with a warm front, it is the leading edge of a warmer air mass, okay? So the air behind it is warmer than the air out ahead of it. Um, a long warm front sometimes too, you will get storms firing up, you get some rain firing up depending on the season. Um, so it's just basically denoting warmer air that's moving in. Now on the opposite end, we have the cold front. The cold front here is seen in the blue and the cold front is denoting a cooler air mass. Okay, so out ahead of this cold front, the air is warmer. Once this cold front passes, the air is cooler. Okay, that's why it's called a cold front. Now, the cold fronts along those fronts, typically depending on the season, say spring, summer, early fall, um, we typically get really strong storms that form along these cold fronts because there's such a drastic change in the warm air out ahead of it, the cold air behind it. So cold and warm air don't like each other. They're usually fighting along that cold front and that's why you see storms firing up typically along those fronts. All right, so sometimes along that cold front, you get really strong thunderstorms, especially in, say, the spring, the summer, the early fall. And I know you all talked about clouds a little bit with Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich. Uh, this particular cloud that I want to talk to you about is your thunderstorm cloud. 
Whenever I show this cloud at school talks, I always am asked, is this a bomb going off? <laughs> it looks like it, right? But not quite a bomb going off. This is called a cumulonimbus cloud. So this is your thunderstorm cloud. And again, they form along those cold fronts because remember I mentioned you have warm air and you have cold air. They're fighting. They don't like each other. Okay. Now, sometimes the storms get really, really strong, even severe storms, and they produce tornadoes. So your supercell storms uh, produce tornadoes. And with tornadoes, so the way they form is you have what's called wind shear. Wind shear is the change in wind direction and or speed with height, right? So whenever you have that change in wind speed in or direction, uh, at the surface or at the ground, you have the spinning of the wind, right? And in these thunderstorms, you actually have rising air. And as the air continues to rise, it will pull that horizontal funnel, if you will. It will pull it vertical. And that's the beginning phase of a tornado developing. So tornadoes are very serious. Uh, serious. Obviously, you want to take them seriously because not only can they damage your home or your car, they can also uh, take out lives as well. So they can be deadly. So you do want to take these things seriously. Um, here's a picture that I've been using for the past couple of years, just showing an actual tornado that was on the ground. They look very scary. They're very violent. And again, you want to take tornadoes seriously. So let's talk about tornadoes really quickly because in all of this uh, relates to the weather map because again, I showed you that cold front and which sometimes can lead to tornadoes forming. So tornado safety, you want to make sure that you seek shelter immediately. All right, we're into the spring season now and spring can be a pretty active severe weather season okay we're actually in severe weather season now so you want to seek shelter immediately here's what you want to do you want to go to the lower the lowest level of your home away from any windows okay so you want to get away from windows outside walls the bathrooms the closets are some of the safest places you can go as long as they're away from windows and the outside walls if you're outdoors you want to lie flat face down in a ditch okay you don't want to stay in your vehicle you want to try to find a ditch if you can now we've talked about tornadoes a little bit um, creating a lot of damage so here's a look at the scale especially this is good to know as especially as we work our way through severe weather season so an ef0 tornado is 65 to 85 mile per hour winds the damage is relatively light EF1 is 86 to 110 miles per hour, okay? The damage will say moderate. EF2 is 111 to 135 miles per hour. That is considerable damage, all right? When we get to EF3, 136 to 165 mile per hour winds, severe damage. An EF4 tornado is 166 to 200 miles per hour. That is devastating damage. And then EF5 is 200 plus miles per hour. All right. The damage is incredible. We're talking entire towns completely destroyed and demolished. All right. So I wanted to show you this just to give you some insight on uh, tornadoes and the wind speeds, the damage that tornadoes could do. Again, all circling back to the weather map. So when you watch the weather, you know, on the news or, or you watch the weather every day, maybe online or, or, or your TV, I just want you to think of some of those things we talked about today, high pressure, low pressure, uh, the warm front, the cold front, and kind of get an idea of some of the things and some of the storms that those cold fronts can produce. So hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you learned a little bit about the weather map today as well as tornadoes. Again, if you have any questions, certainly send them my way. All right. Thanks, Aisha. Great tip on tornadoes there. And again, we'll probably talk about tornadoes again at some point during weather school. Now, tomorrow we will be doing another weather school at one o'clock in the afternoon. As always, if you miss any of these, don't worry. Maybe you joined late. 
These are all posted on the WCNC YouTube ch uh, channel. If you go to the WCNC YouTube channel, it's a great resource because we archive all of these and we have a playlist with all of the weather schools on there. So you can go back and watch them again and again, or maybe uh, get, grab the ones that you missed. Now tomorrow, it's gonna be my turn. I'm gonna be doing the whole thing again. We're gonna try to do this outside. I am gonna do uh, an experiment that I, I, I've tried to do a couple of times. I want to do it outside, but we'll see how the weather is and how the heat is because I'm going to talk about frost and dew. The dew point or frost point are actually one and the same depending on the temperature. So what we're going to do is we're going to create dew and frost and explain the process behind that using some salt, some water, some ice, and some cans. So tune in tomorrow at 1 p.m. We'll be doing weather school. It'll be me solo doing it all. I hope to join, uh, join all of you again tomorrow. And again, don't forget 1 o'clock every day, Monday through Friday. Thanks, everybody, buddy.